Hello everyone, a warm welcome to our EASE Environmental and Sustainability Committee and our HESI joint initiative. Today we're doing this workshop on the UN SDG goals, the SDG Publishers Compact. We're, we were just discussing before we came on air that we were all falling over our acronyms, so uh, please bear with us. It's lovely to see so many. We have quite a lot of people registered today, um, about 150 people we're expecting, so hopefully we get a nice number of of those actually attend with us live today. But don't worry if you or your colleagues who are not able to stay the whole time or whatever, we are recording this and we will make it available to everyone who's registered straight as, as soon as I can get it done after the event. So don't worry if you miss a bit. So let's uh, just while the room's filling up and people are um, arriving, can I just ask you to pop your name in the chat? Just tell us who you are, where you're calling from and we'll get a view of how, how far across the globe we've managed to reach in, for this event. And um, as I say, it's been, a, it's been um, six weeks or so in the planning, so hopefully we'll have a really good session today. So I wanted to start by just welcoming um, the people who are on our panel. So you've got, to, hopefully you can see all of us there um, up in front of you. So my name is Mary Hodgson, I'm the Secretary of Ease. And I'm actually doing a bit of a stand-in job today because the person who should be here uh, doing this presentation for you is Eva Grabrick and Dovolsky. But she unfortunately has succumbed to COVID yesterday. So I'm sure she, if she is able well enough to just join in background, I'm sure she will be with us. Um, but I've just agreed to, to pick up her slides and, and introduce Ease for you and discuss um, from the Ease perspective the project as we go on. So I'm going to start and do a little bit of an introduction to Ease. And then I'm going to hand over to Jo Wixon. Um, jo is from Wiley and a HESI fellow, and she will explain in a bit more detail what all that Im implies. Um, and Jo is going to walk us through, um, you know, a little bit about the, um, the, the SDG goals and the Publishers Compact um, and the HESI initiative. And then after that, um, let me introduce Diana Compton, who's going to run through the survey, you know, what this project, the survey and this workshop, what it's um, setting out to achieve, what we hope to be able to get lots of responses from lot, you know, a wide range of people. And, uh, and Dana will actually walk us through the survey and then talk about a little bit about how you get involved, what the next steps are, and you know, hopefully we'll have a, a chance for some interaction. So I'm conscious that we have, um, uh, we are in a webinar, so what we won't be able to break out into smaller groups in this format. So what we're going to do is ask you to really be active in the chat. I see lots of people already saying hello and, and saying where they're from, which is great. But if you have any comments or you just want to, you know, maybe put some links in of things that are of interest that you've done or examples of things you've done, get those in the chat. If you have any specific questions, pop them in the Q&A and then the girls will monitor the Q&A as we're talking and we can interrupt to, you know, to make sure that everything's in place. Um, and then if you particularly want to, you know, to speak, I can make that happen for you. But if you just raise your hand, I can then enable your microphone so that you can then speak live to the, to everybody in the webinar. So there's a few little bits of housekeeping. As I say, we are recording the session. So um, we will get that to you, you know, within a few days of the event. And we'll get that to everybody who registered, even if they weren't able to actually attend today. So very warm welcome to you all. All right, so I'm just going to introduce you um, to Ease. I've done the introductions there of the people that we are having up in our panel. Um, so for those of you that aren't Ease members, and I'm conscious that lots of people who are registered for today are not Ease members, but maybe have heard of us in one way or another. We are the European Association of Science Editors, although we're hardly a European uh, membership organization these days. We actually have, um, you know, editors and people involved in science communication and editing in every role. So manuscript editors, journal editors, production editors, all sorts of people, copy editors, proofreaders. So we have a, a global membership of about 700 um, and that's been sort of growing over the last couple of years. We have um, our mission, which is to, you know, a nice apple pie and motherhood sort of mission, improve global standards and the quality of science editing. That's our, our main goal to promote the value of science editors and to, and to make sure that they're seen as, you know, as having a valuable role in the process. And then to support professional development, research and collaboration and networking. So to, to enable people to get the benefit of um, joining, you know, with others and sharing 
good practice and so on. And so in amongst our, um, our activities, we have four special interest committees. And this one that is running this workshop today is our Environment and Sustainability Committee. Um, it was established in 2020 um, and it was done at a time when we were planning to do our, um, our 2020 conference in Valencia in Spain uh, with, that was going to be based on an environmental theme. So um, we started the committee, it had two kind of initial aims. The first was to create an environmental policy for ease the association. Um, and to take a baseline of the activities that we've done over the previous 10 years. So we had actually done quite a lot, um, but it had never been kind of put in the context of an environmental policy. So first thing was to sort of get our own um, sort of uh, case in order you know, to make sure that we were walking the walk, as it were. And then the second thing that we set out to do was to develop an environmental and sustainability manifesto for science editing and publishing. Um, which was then published at the, at the conference that we did on sustainability. So these are the sort of what, what actually happened. The 15th Ease Conference, which was, this was the one that was derailed from 2020 and was then done as a virtual conference in 2021 because of the pandemic. But we did it on the theme of pr promoting sustainability and scholarly publishing, the role of editors. So it was very important to be looking at the whole sustainability and environmental agenda from the perspective of what could editors do on a day-to-day -day basis. So that led us then to, we'd had the environmental um, manifesto out in draft for quite some time because things were derailed by the pandemic. Um, but finally, in June 2021, we were able to publish that. We published it in European Science Editing. We sort of launched it at the conference and we then pushed that and promoted it amongst the wider publishing and editing communities. So I see there that Joe has popped those links in the chat. So if, you, if you're not familiar with that manifesto, then it's a very practical kind of um, guide to how you can, in your business and in your association, in your institution, your journal, you can take sort of you know, very practical steps to, to supporting your environmental sustainability goals. So our own association policy, um, we did, and there's a link to that there, that's publicly available on our website. But when we did that initially in 2020, it was before we were aware of the UN SDG um, sort of initiative. So once we became aware of that, we then went back over our own policy and we set it in the context of the Publishers Compact. And that really provided us with a great framework, which, you know, which we were then able to put through the manifesto as well. So what are our plans for the future? Some of these are sort of already underway. So we had uh, this initiative with the HESI group um, to look at the Publishers Compact and to see you know, to what extent there had been progress by our constituents in, in terms of making some uh, you know, positive actions towards the achievement of the SDGs. We wanted to create some guidelines and some tools for journal editors and other you know, people involved in the editorial process. And that's sort of you know, building on the manifesto, which although has been published, you know, is a work in progress and we should continue to develop it over time. Um, so that's an important kind of guide. Um, and then we developed a, a very simple checklist and our plan is to you know, make a, a more substantial checklist with, with more details to help people uh, provide you know provide a framework for their actions um, obviously we you know continue to raise environmental awareness and promote sustainability practices amongst our constituents so our members and the wider community and one of one example of that which we did last year and we're just doing it again this year is we're doing a sort of joint initiative with the UK Health Alliance um, who are organizing um, for a joint editorial on health and climate change to be um, to be published in multiple health journals at the same time. I think the, the window for it is about six weeks, sort of at the end of October into November. And it's, a, it's in the run up to COP27, which is being held in Egypt. Um, and we did a similar thing last year in the run up to COP26, which was held in Glasgow. So that's a really good example where the UK Health Alliance were able to come to us as a kind of um, you know, membership of editors and say, you know, for those of you that are in health journals, can you really participate in this action? So that's been a great thing. And then if Eva were here, she would be able to tell you a little bit more about this. But Eva 
um, is responsible. She's on the sort of organizing committee for the PubMet conference, which happens annually in Croatia. And in 2023, they are going to have a session dedicated to environmental awareness and sustainability, which will be organized by this committee of ours in EASE. So that's a, another sort of plan for next year. So now I'm going to hand over to Jo. Oh, great, thank you. So a kind of quick reminder of why we're all here, <laughs> which is the UN SDGs or Sustainable Development Goals. So the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, which was adopted by all UN member states in 2015, has these 17 goals at its heart. And they're an urgent call for action by all countries in a global partnership. They're about securing the future of our communities, our planet and all the other living things we share it with. And so I'm sure all of you on the call are just as much invested in us achieving these goals as we are here on the panel. And that's really why we're here. So this is where it all stems from. So if we can move on to the next one, Mary. Thank you. So stemming from that and in response to that, in October 2020, the International Publishers Association and the UN Publications team jointly launched an SDG Publishers Compact at the Frankfurt Book Fair. So the compact recognizes that publishers have an important role to play in achieving the UN SDGs, both through our research content and our educational outputs, but and the reach and impact for change that we can drive with those, but also as um, responsible organizations employing individuals. So over 200 publishers have signed up so far and they agree to take action upon 10 commitments, which we'll look at in a moment. But we know that there are many more organisations out there yet to join. And that's part of the rationale for the survey to find out where people who have signed up have got to, but also what might be holding people back from joining in. So if I can have the next slide, Mary, thank you. So what are the 10 commitments that uh, publishers uh, sign up to or institutions sign up to when they join the commitment are? They recognise, as we've said, the two different ways that publishers can contribute. So some of them, some of those actions there relate to the content we publish and how the others relate to how we operate as organisations. So it really is a holistic view of what uh, publishers and other organisations related to us can do. They also stretch further, driving transparency in our work to support the UN SDGs, talking about reporting and uh, actively promoting what we've done but also um, to efforts to raise awareness. So advocating for the goals among um, our staff, suppliers and customers. And so it's a really broad set of commitments uh, to support the UN SDGs. We can move on to the, the next one. Thank you, Mary. So then to um, support that compact and drive action, HESI, the UN's Higher Education Sustainability Initiative, facilitated an SDG Publishers Compact Fellows Programme. An important point to this is that it's a multi-stakeholder group. So it's publishers, librarians, academics and sustainability experts working together to build alignment and drive action towards the SDGs. So we have four work streams. Um, one focuses on integrating SDGs into educational materials. Another is about connecting academic researchers and their research with practitioners. A third is about redefining what we perceive to be impact and supporting achieving impact. And then finally, the last one looks at changing higher education culture. And these groups so far have produced a range of resources that you might like to apply to your journals and books. So these include top action tips for editors, publishers and academics in how they can best support the UN SDGs and a rubric for incorporating SDG content into textbooks. We'll also invite you to join us for our first Solutions Summit on the 2nd of November, where we'll share these resources with editors, uh, publishers, and uh, other bodies within the publishing industry, and discuss how better to connect practitioners and professionals with research. And now I'll hand you over to Dana Compton, who will talk about this joint initiative we're doing with EASE and walk us through the survey. Great, thank you so much, Joe. So Mary alluded earlier to um, undertaking this joint initiative between our, our two groups. We really saw some great alignment between EASE's goals and the, the fellows goals and, and you know, identified a, a 
logical place for collaboration, which um, even hits one of the SDGs itself, the 17th goal, which is uh, partnership to achieve the goal. So very important to sort of leverage our joint strength to, to make progress. So what we've decided to do, our project is, is really to assess the, six, the current um, status of signatories, how much progress they've made um, towards the 10 commitments, um, but we equally want to learn from journals and institutions that are not yet signatories or, or do not intend to become signatories. So we both want to see how far along those who have signed have come, as well as what's holding us back. Um, and, you know, for, I can say for the HESI group, certainly, I think, you know, we want to see what the obstacles are so that that can guide our work going forward. Um, I know EASE is also, as, as Mary mentioned, very interested in providing guidelines and, and checklists and such for journal editors. We want to be developing the right resources that can enable um, journals, editors, institutions to, to commit and make progress. So this is the kickoff, uh, so to speak, for our project in which we'll, we'll walk through a, a survey that we'll use to assess where we are. Um, I will kind of do that in live time with you all so that you can see what we've developed. And um, we'll then analyze the results and um, publish uh, an article that will kind of summarize what we've learned. Um, and then of course, as I said, that'll uh, help guide our work going forward. Um, Mary, if you could move to the next slide. So we'll, like I said, we'll walk through the survey. Some of the things that we want to learn from the questions that we've pulled together are, are you answering on behalf of your journal or your institution? Um, I think this is one of the, the tricky things to understand, uh, frankly, about the compact is that journals can be signatories to the compact individually. Publishers can be signatories to the compact. Organizations like Ease can also be signatories. So there are multiple different perspectives um, that can be brought um, from the signatory perspective. And we really want to be able to analyze uh, where is the most action happening? Where is the most progress? Um, we want to look at um, certainly, as I said, we want to know if if there are groups out there that are not aware of the compact and what the barriers are. I had already said that. Um, we want to know which uh, SDGs are most relevant for your journals or your organization. Um, what you have done with respect to the 10 commitments. Um, and we are asking that. Um, I'll get into this more when we look at the survey itself, but we'll we'll be asking that both to those who are current signatories, as well as those who are not, because it may well be um, that there are groups or, or journals that have not yet become a signatory, but they're making active progress um, on the commitments. Um, and, and we'd love to bring that to light. Maybe this all seems a little bit more achievable if you realize you're already doing some of these things in the natural course of your work. Um, we'd love to learn about metrics to measure effectiveness. Um, and then we're not only looking at which SDGs and publishers compact commitments are you taking action on, but also some of the, the key uh, priorities in the environmental manifesto that, that Mary spoke about. So we'll, we'll go through that a little bit. If you can move to the next slide. Great, and I, so I'm gonna now, well, we'll just go through this really quick. Feel free to put questions in the Q&A. Um, go ahead and put comments and examples in the chat. Joe and Mary and Tiana are going to um, monitor that. We really want to have a little bit of a conversation about the survey and the questions that we're asking, and especially want to uncover if there are any questions that are not clear um, so that we're gathering the best possible data. Um, if you do want to ask a question verbally, feel free to raise your hand. I think Mary can, can give you the ability to use your microphone. Um, and again, just to reiterate that a recording will be available um, after. So I am going to go ahead and share my screen. And okay, I would like to confirm if everybody can see the survey now. Okay, perfect. So 
we'll walk through this very quickly, but again, any questions, comments, please um, interrupt along the way. So just a little bit of a description about what the survey aims to achieve. I think we've talked about that considerably. Privacy statement, of course, we'll, we'll be respectful of privacy and, and um, handle personal data appropriately. So as I mentioned, we really wanna understand um, who are you answering the questionnaire, this survey on behalf of? Um, so I'm gonna just say that I'm answering on behalf of, of my institution, the American Society of Civil Engineers for the purpose of, of this. And we'll just pretend that's what I'm doing here. And I'll go ahead and say that's ASCE. Um, I think I see something in the chat, Joe. Is that something that I should pause for? No, that's fine. That's Mary reminding everyone that if anything isn't clear to you, if you read a question and you, you don't, you're not sure how you would answer it for any reason, do let us know. We, yes, we'll do chime in. Yeah. Thank you. Um, let's see, headquarters, where are you based? For me, that's North America. So some typical demographic data to get us started. We're a medium organization. Um, yes, and and I let's be aware there is some skip logic here. I am trying to take a path that is going to allow us to hit on every um, question. So I just want to point that out. So yes, I am aware of the goals. Yes, I'm aware of the compact. Um, we have embedded some links here. So you know if you're thinking that somebody else might be answering this questionnaire and not entirely familiar with some of these things. Um, and wants to check out more information. There are some links, but for our purposes, I'll go ahead and say yes, that I am aware of the compact. Um, ASCE is a signatory. Uh, I'm gonna give a little lie here and say no so that I can get to the appropriate next question. Okay, so here's a question that'll pop up if you're not a signatory. We we'll want to know if you are planning to. And so we have several options here. And if you say, mm, maybe I'm planning to, or, or yes, I'm planning to, you'll be taking a slightly different path than if you say, no, you're not planning to. Um, for this purpose, I'm going to say, yes, I am planning to become a signatory. And then I'll have to go back. Um, as we mentioned, we want to know which SDGs you're focused on. So if you are a signatory to the compact, you'd have um, selected three SDGs uh, when you became a signatory. For the purpose of this survey, and, and I hope it's clear with the language that we've used, we really want to hear all of the SDGs you're focused on. It is sort of an artificial um, limitation when you become a signatory to the compact. Many of us are, are focused on more than three of these. Um, for ASCE, you know, we focus on clean water and clean energy and infrastructure and sustainable cities and climate action. Um, so I'd say partnerships for the goals as well. Um, but you know what, what we really want to get out of this is what sorts of things have you done? And so I'm going to pause here and not artificially fill this with my own ideas of activities you might have undertaken um, and open this up for folks to provide some of their own examples, what you think you might put in this box if you are answering the survey. You can pop stuff in the chat if you'd like. Do we have any examples or no? So, I will say, so one thing that we've done at ASCE is the content questions. Any others that folks might add? Yeah, so we've got um, launching new journals in SDG subject areas. And 
policy initiatives for school age education. Great, thank you. So we'll move on from there. Now this question will pop up if you are or are planning to become a signatory. Um, and also, as I said, if you are not a signatory, um, we want to know if you've taken any of these actions independently. And I will say, if you're not a signatory and you haven't done any of these things and you don't wanna go through a whole matrix question, this is skippable, but we do, we'd love to capture if, if you're taking some. So just uh, these are the same 10 commitments that Joe had, had talked about a little bit earlier. Um, this is a great opportunity if you have questions about what any of these mean um, or want to confirm whether some of the actions that you've taken fit the commitments, we can, we can chat about that too. I'll pause for a moment in case Joe see, sees things in the chat that should be addressed. I think it's just more excellent ideas of initiatives that people could fill in which is great do keep fabulous do keep adding those everyone because it's really inspirational for everyone else on the call as well to see what, what people are doing i think absolutely it gives us everybody new ideas um, to undertake so thank you for that um so you know you'll need to kind of assess where you are on a on a scale um so for us at ASCE if i'm looking at you know, stating sustainability policies and targets, um, including adherence to the compact, incorporating SDGs and their targets. We've done some of this. We can do more of this. We certainly haven't, you know, identified targets and, and those sorts of things. And I'm, I'm sure we're probably all in the same boat. And some of this is going to be really subjective. Um, but I think, a, you know, your best assessment about where you are and how far you have to go, I might I might say too, um, but you know, I'm, I want to run through this quickly enough, um, cognizant of time, but also want to give a chance for questions about what these mean. Um, promoting and acquiring content, certainly we've done a lot of that. Uh, reporting on progress, I think this is somewhere where you know we are needing to develop better better tools. And that's part of what this survey is intended to do and give us some ideas for metrics. So I'm gonna say we probably haven't done much of this. We do have a person who promotes, this is about um, raising awareness to staff. We do a, a bit of that. Um, to suppliers, this is really tricky for, for publishers, I think, and especially for, for editors. It can feel a little bit like getting out of your lane. I don't, I don't think we've, we've done much of that yet. And we've, we've kind of been waiting for our suppliers to come along. An advocate to customers and stakeholders by actively communicating about the SDGs. We do some of this, not a ton. So you'll, again, just kind of assess where you are, and I'm going to just speed through this. Certainly have taken action on at least one. Right, I'll pause there in case there are any comments or questions. Good. All right, so this is um, pretty straightforward. Do we know where we're starting from? How are we... Um, assessing what our what our progress has been. Have we done a baseline analysis? Uh, I'll say for this, no. Um, but if you have, what we want to know is when was it? When was this done? So just say, no, we haven't done that there. Um, here, this is an open-ended question. What indicators or metrics does your journal or institution use? And we've given some idea of things that you might uh, look at to measure the effectiveness of, of your um, initiatives related to the commitments. Um, I'm curious whether uh, our attendees are looking at things that we haven't captured here, that we haven't thought of. Are we feeling like these are, are kind of logical? I'd say that, um, you know, for us at ASCE, we're pretty much at the AGVs and 
you know, trying to, to get to downloads on some of the highlighted content. Any other thoughts on this in the chat? Okay, we'll go from there. Okay, what impact um, have your activities had? So, you know, one of the commitments um, from the compact is to identify budget resources uh, towards the goals. So, you know, if you've done that in a big way, you might feel this has a negative um, impact on your budget if, you know, it, it results in um, additional usage, additional subscribers, you might feel that this has a positive impact. For us, I would say relatively neutral. Um, impact on paid staff. This can be, you know, very time consuming work. I know the person um, on our team, our marketing director who works on our, our collections invests a lot of time into that activity. So we might say, you know, it's, it's negative in terms of staff resourcing. Um, volunteer workforce. Our job would be easier in creating collections if this were done um, upfront in the peer review process. We haven't done that yet. So I might say neutral, but if we were to do that, it might have a negative impact on our volunteer workforce. Authors, I'd say probably positive for authors and resources, uh, readers and community awareness, I'd say positive as well. Any other thoughts here? How, how are others feeling about, you know, if you've undertaken activities, how they've um, impacted and what kind of comments or, or concerns might you share? Anything? I feel like one thing that I might say if I were responding to this survey would, would be exactly that. Um, would like to capture SDG relevance. Concern about that. Um, might identify an obstacle, which is really what we're trying to to get to to guide our future work, um, both for ease and and the Hesse Group. Anything additional in the chat, Joe, or should I move on to the next? Um, Harpal of RSC made a really good point that new staff always want to know about our commitment to the SDGs before joining. And that's definitely becoming something that's being recognized and talked about on careers, blogs and other sites, that it's something that uh, candidates look for in potential future employers. It's becoming a very important part of how they choose where to work. In which case, yeah, I think in that case, it would be a, uh, quite a positive for paid staff. So that's a great point. I had not considered that. Thanks yeah. for bringing it up. Thank you for sharing that, Harper. Okay, so we'll move on. And this is where the survey kind of shifts from the publisher's compact focus specifically towards the ease um, manifesto. So mm -hmm. uh, we certainly want to capture whether respondents are ease members, um, whether they yeah. are... Sorry, I'm just going to pause you for a moment, Dana. We've got a nice suggestion. Thank you to uh, John Ray from Wiley about um, question 13, that we might want to play around with the tone and the wording of that to clear up what we're meaning when we're talking about getting staff involved. And so, yeah, there we'll look to restructure that question. That's exactly what today is about, that if any of you find questions that you find unclear or that you think we could enhance before the survey goes live, we're really receptive to hearing about that and improving the survey. So thank you for that one. And Nicola, I see, has the same view as John. So that's great. We'll definitely get in there and play around with that question until we get it right. Thank you. Wonderful. Great. Thank you so much. Okay. All right. I've got ease number. Okay. And we want to know whether respondents are familiar with the manifesto. Um, I would personally say yes to that, um, but others may may not be. Um, again, very much like the publisher's compact question, this, this is formatted very similarly. Whether or not you're aware of the manifesto, you may well be undertaking some of these actions. Um, so thinking that I am responding on behalf of my organization, do we have a written environmental policy? Yes, we have a sustainability policy. Um, do we have a dedicated environmental officer? So for ASE, we do have a chief sustainability officer. 
have we reduced production of printed publications? Now this, we've had a lot of discussions, so would love to hear your comments about uh, whether a, a scale works um, for some of these questions. So this, this is a tricky one, right? I would think, in my mind, I would think if I've completely eliminated print, I might choose five, you know, for ASE, we're not quite there yet. So I would say somewhere between two and three. Hmm. So you might have a portfolio of journals where three of them have gone online only and two of them are still printing. So that could be a middle score exactly as you've done, Dana. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. Or if if everything is, is printed, I might put zero, of course. Yeah. Um, energy efficient appliances. Honestly, I have absolutely no idea whether our appliances are energy efficient. Uh, do we enable recycling? Yes. Um, reusable cutlery and such. You know, it's a mixed bag. Sometimes we have plastic. Um, this I really don't know about locally produced and seasonal food. Um, this is about uh, transport to work. So Mm, I'd say we're not so great about that. We're in a yeah. unusual location. So thank you, Dana. Just one moment. Um, Henry Spielberg's made a really good point that there is still quite some footprint, environmentally speaking, of publishing electronically as well. So shifting to from to, to stopping print isn't the only action that we can we as publishers can take to reduce that footprint. Um, so Absolutely. thinking about the energy costs and where we source that energy, for example. So yeah, great, great comment, Henry, thank you. It is a great point, thank you. Uh, let's see, facility working from home, energy saving, I don't know about that. Okay, these are, these are two questions that we did wanna dig into a little bit with the group. Um, well, not so much this one. Do you publish articles on sustainability or um, consequences of environmental change that I, I would think would be based on volume of the, the content that you're publishing in that space? So again, I might say we're in the mid range. Yeah, and Dana, we've got another comment here from John Ray from Wiley who's saying a similar point about the question 16 on print that it is um, quite a complex issue. There's a lot of differences in thinking about where you print or the paper you use if you are still printing. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there might be some gradations in there. We might want to have a look at that question. And just to say that the manifesto that these questions derive from, Mary, I believe, is looking to talk with experts in the, in the field who are already working on uh, footprint reduction and, and to refine and enhance the manifesto as time goes on. So um, maybe you want to mention that a tiny bit. Yes, I mean, I think it, I think John's point there is is something that we certainly went round because when we were still producing our journal in print, um, you know that it was like okay, exactly that. Can we choose to do it on recycled paper? And we had a long conversation about whether we should use recycled paper or whether we should use FSC you know certified paper that's grown specifically for the paper industry and, and you know and and with sort of trees are planted behind it to make sure that it's a it's a ongoing sustainable exercise we also went uh you know away from um we had the discussion about changing plastic wrappers into com into the starch compostable ones and we ended up coming away from that and went for a just a recyclable paper envelope and and I think quite a lot of uh, magazines have gone for that option. I noticed that in the magazines that come to me. So uh, some are in, uh, not so many in plastic these days, some are in starch wrappers, but quite a lot have just gone back to a straightforward paper envelope. So sometimes I think you can be thinking, it's not necessary. I think John's point about is is the end goal to be no print? Well, not necessarily because there's a role for print and, but it's then it's about how do you get it to them, you know, and how do you, how is it shipped and what paper is it on and what's its longevity and what do you know is it intended to be something that gets passed around and around or put on a shelf or is it a disposable thing you read and throw away and mm -hmm. and you know a lot of this stuff is recyclable so if you if you can recycle it then that's all going to be put into the mix so yeah he's absolutely right in in what we say there so maybe we need to have a, a little think about that about Thank that you. question appearing to suggest that um, that that no print is the goal when possibly it isn't. Mm. Yeah, thanks very much, Mary. That's great. Thank you, John, for that. Great, perfect. We will definitely revisit that. And um, 
moving along to this one, uh, does your institution challenge authors and reviewers to consider the environmental impact of their manuscript? We um, had a lot of back and forth on how to word this um, and felt that respondents might interpret this question one of two ways. And so definitely curious for feedback here. On one hand, you might say, what is the environmental, environmental impact of the content that's being communicated in the manuscript? Or are we talking about challenging authors and reviewers to consider the environmental impact of actually publishing that particular manuscript? And, and um, Joe, I don't know if you wanted to say anything more about that. I know you were keen on, on getting some feedback there. Yeah, exactly. We just wanted to make sure that we're we have everyone answering the question in the same sense, so that we don't get two sets of answers mixed up, um, dif different intents of people responding. So yeah, we were just what just to hear from you whether you think that wording's clear enough that we mean perhaps choosing a, an online only journal over a print journal, or asking or checking the website of the publisher to see how they handle their printing, as opposed to how it could be interpreted as meaning whether their research paper imparts knowledge about environmental impact. Um, Donna, John has just raised that same issue of what, what are you expecting authors and reviewers to do differently? He's struggling to see what he could do there. And I wonder if this is an opportunity to ask people on the call, you know, whether they do have any suggestions about what could be done. I guess, Mary, a question back would be, you know, in, in drafting the EASE Environmental Manifesto, what was the, it might be helpful for everybody to understand the thinking behind that when the, when the manifesto was being written. I'm sorry, I'm just, I'm just looking at Senya. Let, let's, can we just maybe ask Senya to speak to us because I feel she's got some, she's got some interesting mm. So let me just let me just enable her mic a minute. Senya, can you have you got your mic on now? I'm on the phone. Can you hear me? Oh, there you go. Yes, we can hear you. I'm yes. a little bit yeah. sick, so excuse me for not turning on the camera. No, it's um, fine. Sorry as far that. as I know, uh, and but Eva knows better. Uh, uh, the requirement for every journal that is supported. Uh, by the Croatian government, and there are a lot, about 300 of them, uh, is to have a print issue. And some of them still think that uh, they have to print a lot of uh, copies. For example, Croatian Medical Journal, I'm a part of that editorial team, prints like 20 copies per issue and sends, sends uh, the copies to the libraries and the rest uh, print a lot, 1,000, 10,000, still too much. And that requirement, I think Eva through uh, our uh, Creation Association of Scholarly Communication tried to write to the ministry, but um, I think nothing has changed. Maybe it will, we do hope. Also for the books and other things, it has to be, books have to be printed in order to be supported, uh, Congress abstracts and so on. Okay. And Senya, what, what did you think about John's point there about um, what reviewers and, and authors could do differently to think about the environmental impact of their manuscripts? So, so just for those of you that don't know, Senya is the... Um, the editor-in-chief of European Science Editing, which is EASY's sort of in-house journal. Um, so uh, it will be quite interesting to get her thoughts about that because obviously she's dealing with authors and reviewers all the time. I didn't actually think a lot about uh, what reviewers and authors could do. I'm always thinking about what editors can do. For example, acting as a reviewer, we could, um, I don't know, reject the review because the journal is still in print and state that for a reason? Ooh, would that be a reason? That feels 
Yes, because I, 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 I'm like that following would be a, a policy, lot of people. Certainly. <laughs> yeah, I'm following a lot of people that are like uh, leaders in science communication on Twitter, and they have some uh, principles, I would say. And for example, they they do not peer review for journals that are hybrid journals. And they state that as a policy. For I'm not going to support a hybrid journal. I will not review for that journal. Okay. We could also do the same for journals that still have print issues in order to support sustainability. It's maybe extreme, but it's a clear message. I don't know otherwise how can a reviewer like moderate a journal's policy. Hmm. Uh, you could look in the manuscript uh, how the uh, sustainability issues were, I don't know, were they taken into account. But that's the other, like, the other thing to do. The first thing for me would be, am I going to accept this review? Is this a journal that is sustainable. And if it is, then I'm going to accept it. And then uh, when I'm going to look at the manuscript, do I have any instructions? Uh, is the manuscript in line with SDG? And if it is, um, it would be easier if every journal would create some kind of a checklist or instructions that could help a reviewer. Like, for example, as we have the Sager checklist for gender and equality, sex and gender equality, we could have for sustainability. Also. Sustainability. Okay. Let me let me um let me ask uh, Shirag Patel if if I can just enable her to talk. Shirag, are you able to hear me? Oh she's can we give permission to talk? Shirag, are you able to hear me? She's, she's, she's yeah. written in the chat. Yeah, he may not be able to, to speak. No. Yeah. I, I've, I've enabled her to, but let's see. So she's written in the chat. So, um, apologies for the plug. I agree with Dana's point about the SDGs being labor intensive. Potential solution might be a human plus AI approach to creating and managing SDG collections post publication, which we at Cactus support. Um, TNF SDG O. I'm not sure what the O is there. Can you hear me now? Yes, go ahead. Yes. Oh, yeah, sorry, my, my headphones are just wonky. Apologies. No. Yeah, no, I, was, I was just saying, um, you know, I, I totally agree with Dana that, you know, it's, it's not very easy to, um, to actually just manually sit there and create these collections. They, you know, they take a lot of effort and a lot of time. Um, and um, you know, so what you know, what, what we're what we're doing is trying to help uh, our publisher partners um, to use um, artificial intelligence um, to help their uh, editors actually uh, manage the creation um, and um, and the um, you know and the constant updating of their SDG collections um, post publication. Um, you know, because as you know, you know, as the publishers in the room will understand that. Post publication is very hard to classify content, um, and uh, it's better to do it pre-publication. Uh, but that requires um, quite a bit of work and changes to the uh, submission system and publishing systems. Um, so we're, you know, we're trying to figure out ways to do it after the fact um, and to allow the editors the ability to see across many different uh, types of content or pieces of content and be able to um, quickly and easily um, classify them into the different SDGs. So you're coming back to the point about the kind of staff burden of, mm -hmm. of working yeah. with SDGs and promoting them, I think then, Jay, yeah. aren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is one way you could tackle it, isn't it? For sure. And on that, I think we've also got another uh, comment from Henry Spielberg on the BMJ is coming back to the point about um, not, not just being print off or on, not being a binary thing, but looking at printing responsibly and ways of doing that. And he's linked to BMJ's 
green statement and there are some really nice interesting ideas in there about how to source the paper from leftover waste rather than uh, trees intentionally produced for making paper which which I love um, especially because I used to live in Sweden and it comes from a uh, Swedish environmentally uh, sound home building industry which is fantastic so I love that there's a few great ideas in there for people to have a look at uh, the link is in the chat and Jay oh. and um, also oh. Stuart Cooper have both put links into examples from Stuart, I've just I've just uh, I've just enabled Stuart to Stuart's mic so Stuart do you want to just uh, say a few words yeah, well, we uh, science open. Um, I mean, I'm I'm part of the fellowship program as well with Dana and Joe, so um, we've worked together on a lot of things. But um, we do a lot of work around post uh, publication curation of uh, around SDGs. We did um, four collections specifically for Emerald, um, whereby they grouped SDGs together and they had editorial input. So I, I believe mm -hmm. they got specific editors to run with each of these uh, collections, for example, fairer society, responsible management. Um, and they seem to work very, very well amongst all the others that we also do in kind of AI safe search strategies as well. But certainly a human intervention is, it's definitely a, a necessity, mm -hmm. these kinds of things. All right, thank you, Stuart. Thank you, um, Jay. Those are both really great um, resources that people might want to tap into and uh, not necessarily need to assign their, their staff to that. That's great to hear that. I think probably we should go back to Dana and let her finish going through the survey, though, because we're we're getting close on our time. We're getting, yeah. we're getting close to time. And thank I think... you very much both um, for those AI driven ideas, very future facing ways to tackle this. Thank you. Thank you. I'm not sure we're you, very much closer to uh, settling whether this question is understandable and what we really want to uncover. Oh here. yeah, there are some there are some feedback in the chat, Dana, that we can. Okay. Do Thank you very much. Yeah, no, no, we're absolutely uh, got some good ideas from people on the on the chat. Perfect. Excellent. So I'm going to move right on then, and I think we're we're getting close to the end anyway. Um, so we are going to ask whether or not you are doing any of the previously mentioned um, actions, whether you're following other initiatives that support environmental and sustainability goals, um, want to hear what they are if you are, um, and then simply wrapping up the survey with, would you like to receive further information about this study? Um, and of course, there's really only one right answer there, so. <laughs> Go ahead and say yes, and and then if you answer yes that you want that, we'll be asking for for your information so that we can share um, the final study and, and results, uh, the analysis. So um, I will say the one question that I wasn't able to get into this was really about um, if you are no, uh, not planning to become a signatory at all, you just say no. Uh, we will be asking about what obstacles and challenges you're facing. And, and again, we'll use that data to, to kind of figure out where we go, um, both within ease and in the fellows group to, to try to provide resources to overcome those obstacles. So I will stop sharing. And I don't know, Mary, if you wanted to pull the slides back up. Great, thank you. So just to speak a little bit to next steps and timelines, um, we'll be, as we've mentioned, doing some final tweaks on the survey to make sure it captures everything we, we want. Um, we'll, we'll distribute it through the ease channels and, and the fellows channels. The survey will be open until the end of November. Um, we are looking at, two months for analysis and to prepare a paper about the outcomes. Um, there will be other events, um, trainings that we hope that you will participate in. Joe mentioned the Solutions Summit that the Fellows Group is conducting on November 2nd. Um, I think that will certainly be informative as well. Um, and then downstream, based on results of the survey, we'll look to develop um, guidelines, tools, training resources. 
think, do we have one more slide? Yes, and just some more thoughts about how you can contribute. Please respond to the survey. Um, I think the only way we continue to make progress and move forward is to, to but honestly assess where we are and what our challenges are. Um, I think that's that's about it. If if Mary or or Joe wanted to add anything here, um, please please feel free. Well, really, just thank you for joining us and uh, for putting so many great ideas into the chat, both for us designing the survey and for the other attendees, and uh, for your kind suggestions on refining the survey, which is exactly what we were looking for before we launch it, because. You can only do so much when you're designing it yourself. You really need to try it out. So uh, thank you so much for being our incredibly helpful and inspiring beta testers all in one go. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, so very many thanks um, to Dana and to Joe for all their uh, efforts. And Dana has worked tirelessly on putting the survey together and uh, everybody on the, on the group has uh, sort of input to her work. So. A big thank you to her. So yeah, next steps, we will uh, take these comments today and um, re re refine the survey to hopefully make these clarifications that you've asked for. And then we will be, hopefully in the next week or so, we'll actually be able to send it out to everybody and ask them to complete it. So yeah, complete it yourself, but also, you know, pass it on to your colleagues or anyone that you think, um, you know, would be able to, would be useful to have them participate. So it's an open thing. It doesn't necessarily need to be um, contained just to yourself. So please feel free to share the information. Absolutely, absolutely. We want as, as broad an audience as possible. Thank you, everybody. Okay, thank you, everybody. I'll say goodbye. Thank you, bye. Bye.